Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on board number 8 of the 15 PlayStation 5 boards which I bought on eBay for £900. I was going to look at this on a live stream but unfortunately right as I pulled this board out my internet went down as did half the country. So I've decided to do it as a video instead because well I want to make some content on it and I wanted to do it tonight because I do want to do a couple of tests with this board if I can get it working. Essentially these boards are pretty much scrap. That's how they were sold on eBay. I paid £900 for 15 boards so £60 per board. So yes it seems like a lot of money just for scrap boards but at the same time there are a lot of usable parts on these boards which I'm taking off and then selling on my online store consolefix.shop. You can uh, you can check out the online store, you can buy parts and supplies for PS5s as well as other consoles as well. And a lot of the time I'm taking the usable parts off donor boards because I would rather them go to people to repair their consoles than to fix these boards to sell because number one, I make more money and number two, it puts more consoles back in the wild in the long run because I'm stripping these down and potentially I could get, you know, I could provide console parts for 10, 15, 20 people to actually repair their console. I actually fixed an Xbox Series S earlier on, and even though I fixed it, I'm still shipping it down for parts because it's more economically viable to do it. But that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me as well, you can check out my Twitch page, and if you've got an Amazon Prime account, you can link that to Twitch and become a paid Twitch subscriber, but it won't cost you anything to do as long as you've got Amazon Prime. It does massively, massively help me out. It helps me to continue buying stuff like this to make videos on. So with that being said, let's get into board number eight. Right, so let's get this into a test rig. So like I said, I was doing this for a live stream and I'd given it a visual inspection by the time my broadband went down. So there was a load of liquid metal on the board. I'll include a screenshot now from the live stream. So as you can see by this image, there were quite a few spots of liquid metal all around the HDMI encoder, as well as some other random places on the board. And also on the back of the board as well by the decoupling caps for the APU. So I cleaned all of that up and then obviously my internet went down. So this is where I'm pretty much going to pick up from that. So I haven't actually done anything with the board yet. I don't know what the symptoms are. I don't know what's going on with it. I don't know if it turns on uh, or anything like that. So yeah, that's where we're going to pick up. So I've got a little bit of liquid metal around the die. I'm going to just use that and just spread it around just to potentially keep it cool if it does turn on. So I did clean all of the liquid metal off, but I just didn't get a chance to actually spread the liquid metal back onto the APU. So if you're wondering, there's a couple of tests I want to do with this if I can get it working or with the next one I'll get working. So if you haven't watched the other episodes by now, then they're going to be in the playlist for this video. So check those out first. I'm about to spoil one of the videos in three, two, one. So board number five, I managed to fix. I'm not going to say what was wrong with it. Just in case, you know, you haven't decided to watch a video yet and you don't want full spoilers. But I did fix board number five. And one of the things that I managed to do with board number five was I managed to swap over the BIOS chip from a digital board and turn it into a digital console. My son is actually using that console. Well, not right now, he should be asleep. But that being said, he's actually using that console. It works, it updates, it allows him to play a digital game. So I wanna do a couple of tests with this. Number one, I wanna actually do a proper video on how to do it. But also I wanna try and actually remarry another disk drive. So there's a couple of tests that I'm gonna be doing on the next board I get working, if I get one working. And if not, then I might risk it for the biscuit and use that digital edition PS5. And if I break it, I've got a disc edition PS5 that I can just give to my son. So it's not really a big deal. So, yeah, that's going to be the plan. I hope I can use a disc drive on it. Either way, this console will not be sold as a console. It will be stripped down because I make a lot more money stripping the parts off these 
uh, realistically, even a disc edition board, I can sell a disc edition board for what? £150. Whereas I can get £50 for that. I can get £50 for the HDMI encoder, £60 for the South Bridge, £60 for the SSD controller, and that's that's already profit. Yes, it takes me a little bit of time, but it makes me more money in the long run. So I just don't see any viable way to be able to sell them as working boards because I would be losing money. And obviously, you know, I'm... To put it frankly, I'm out to make as much money as I possibly can. Um, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to pretend that I'm just doing this uh, for the hell of it. I'm I'm here to make money, as any business is, as any person is. We need to make money to survive. And quite frankly, I would rather, number one, make more money, but number two, allow more consoles to be fixed by providing the parts that you're not able to buy from other distributors like Moza and DigiKey and RS Components and things like that. It just makes a lot more sense for everyone for these boards to be stripped. Because even just one component, just that can fix a board, that can fix a board, that can fix a board, that can fix a board. All of these eight RAM chips can fix a board, the SSD chips can all fix a board. You get the you get the idea. There's so many parts on here which can fix other boards. So many parts. And at the same time I make a lot more money. So it's a win-win for everyone. And yes, I know PS5s are still in short supply, but honestly, it just don't make no sense. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to test this console. I'm going to see what's going on with it. So, uh, yeah. Like I said, if you haven't watched the other videos, highly recommend checking them out. I am doing a video on all 15 of these. Just for the sake of making videos. And for YouTube money. <laughs> to be honest. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Alright, this turns on. So it turns on. Does it boot up? That be the question. Wow, it does. There was liquid metal almost touching the BGI on the RAM chip and this boots up and turns on. What the hell is wrong with this console? <laughs> that boots up and turns on. Let's plug in the TV. That is actually booting up. That was stuck in safe mode. Or rather that, no, sorry, that was shut down incorrectly. Not stuck in safe mode. So what's going on with it? Okay, that's booted. There's the three beeps of success. Interesting, no display. Does it recognise that there's a PS5 there? Okay, we've got no display. We've got the HDMI port a little bit, or the cable or that. It does feel a little bit loose, but if I recall from an hour ago, when I stopped looking at this, this has had a HDMI port replacement. So, has it been done wrong? Have they bridged it? Have they completely butchered it? Let's find out. After, after, I disconnect this HDMI cable and connect just the one HDMI cable because sometimes it gives me issues. So the way that I've got this HDMI set up is I've got it on a splitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reroute this quickly and just check it with just one cable. It doesn't quite reach, so it's a little bit tricky. So it's a little bit of a stretch, but does it pick up now? No. No, it doesn't. So one thing I am going to try as well, just before I actually call it an old display, is just cleaning my HDMI cable, just to make sure. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Now the thing is, that could have been fluxing the port. And that could have been all that is wrong with this. I think someone's written this off for flux in the port. Because I know this has had a HDMI replacement because I could tell by the solder joints and the fact that it's a V2 port as well. That's unbelievable, to be honest. It sinks a controller. That's pretty nuts. Okay, my controller's got stick drift. I'm going to go grab another controller. Got one. Right, network. 
Uh, I've got no internet. There we go. Mobile hotspot to the rescue. Okay, there we go. So, what software version is this on? 6.50. Okay, so I can update this. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to accept an update because it's got no disk drive. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, well, I'm going to use this one to do this video, but I'm not going to do it in this video, obviously, because... Um, yeah, this is a repair video, so this isn't a how-to video. So, this all appears to be working. Uh, I don't think there's anything else wrong with this, or it doesn't appear so. So, it's on version 6.50. Um, so, yeah, this isn't really going to be a repair video, unfortunately. But I am doing it, for continuity's sake, I've got to put the video out there. This didn't need fixing. This has been written off purely for the fact that it had what I can only assume is flux in the port because the cable that I was using, this one, the flat one, was brand new. Brand new. I've used it once. It came with my brand new microscope camera. So I can only assume that it's literally flux in the port and that is all that's wrong with this console. So, yeah, sorry, but it's not going to be a repair video, unfortunately. Uh, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. I personally can't believe that I've written that off just for flux in the port. But hey-ho, it is what it is. These things happen. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. Obviously, if you do want to support me, if you do want to see the rest of these videos, then make sure you check out the playlist uh, where there's actually some repair content instead of just cleaning a HDMI cable or so as it transfers IPA into the, into the HDMI port. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. But anyway, never mind. These are not planned. And of course, there's nothing I can do about whether they work or not. I bought them as 15 boards. Didn't know what was wrong with it before I started. And uh, yeah, I hit record. So it's going out there. So that's going to be for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.